Welcome back to another T-Smart video. Hope you are having a great day. And today we've got here a special setup. We've got a dual screen setup with dual computer setup. This is a gaming computer with a dedicated GPU, but there's also here a mini computer without a dedicated GPU, which is used only for productivity like PowerPoint, Excel, and so on and so forth. Usually when we have two computers and two displays, there is a lot of mess on our desk, which is not the case. And that's because we are using a KVM. Now this is one of the latest T-Smart KVMs. It supports dual 8K at 60 Hz or probably more interesting, dual 4K at 120 Hz, which is great for those that want to have some productivity, some work done, but at the same time want to play some games. So there is a lot that we can do with a KVM. It's not just to have our desk organized. And if I press one single button, I can just swap from one computer to the other computer and still have the same keyboard, the same mouse, the same gamepad and the same accessories. But there is a lot more that we can do with it. So let's go and take a closer look at it. These are the contents that we will find inside the package, some paperwork, a user guide, which you see that you won't need because it's so easy to use and I will explain in just a few moments. There's also a remote control. If we are a bit far away from the KVM, we have the option to control it via the remote. There's also a power adapter, which depending on the region that you are, in this particular case, I'm located in EU. In this particular case, I'm located in EU, so I've got this power plug, but if you are in UK or US, you will have the correspondent power adapter. In terms of cables, there are four cables, but two different kinds of cables. This is a combo cable, a great quality combo cable, by the way. This is 8K HDMI, but also with the USB connection, USB type A, which is the one that we will connect to our computer along with this HDMI. And then on the other end, it's a USB type B, which we will connect to the KVM along with another HDMI. So there are two cables of these that we will use for the two outputs of the two computers. And then there are two cables which are just normal, but high quality, normal HDMI cables, 8K, as we can see right over here. But when I mean normal, it's just HDMI without the combo that we have seen. So all the cables that we need to have it working. Now, T-Smart has done quite a few KVMs and a lot of solutions. I will leave some links down below, but this one actually has a different design. Usually there's a metal construction. This one is made of plastic, but the plastic, I must say that it's not a cheap plastic and it's not one single type of plastic and I just removed everything from my desk so that I can show a little bit better without unfocusing it so we have different type of plastics here well built with a really nice look and design now at the front there are a power button there's also a switch button that we can cycle through the computers that we have connected and then the leds that which we will see in just a few moments how it works there's also two usb 2.0 ports that we can connect our peripherals mouse and keyboard but we can also connect other devices if we want two usb 3.0 ports so that we can connect faster units like storage and so on and a audio jack combo so we can connect a headset with microphone and headphones if we want or just a headset with uh, phones only and no microphone it's at our choice now before we look at the back there's also grills right over here on both sides and also at the bottom so that it refreshes the unit and keeps it cool there are some really nice rubber feet here so that it will grip to any surface right over here which is really really awesome in terms of connectivity simple as this there is the power input there's also a ethernet connection so that we can have access to our computers without having extra cables so it will be connected here and then there's a service port which usually just the manufacturer will use this or even if we need to do any kind of firmware upgrade but let's not worry about this one right over here in terms of connectivity this is what matters we have two outputs that we will connect to our two displays via hdmi cable and these are the only cables that are not included 
included because we have cables that we have from our display so that is just fine here we have the connections for pc number one and pc number two so we will connect one normal hdmi cable that we have seen before and then we will also connect one combo cable that has hdmi and the usb type p on one hand and usb type a on the other hand which will connect to our computer the same with PC number two. And basically, this is it. So now that we know how easy it is to connect, let's go and put it on our setup and test it out. So here we are on our setup. Everything is connected. I've got a few accessories here that I want to share with you, including some accessories for gaming. I've got a gaming computer here with a dedicated GPU and a mini computer here with a normal integrated GPU that we can use for work. We will go through everything, starting with the simplest things and finishing up probably with some shortcuts like this one right over here that I can just change my one screen to computer number two and my mouse is here but suddenly I just press this button and bam I'm working on this computer and right now I'm working on this computer and if I do like this and like this I will have my computer number one on both screens but if i want to use it without any shortcuts i can also press right over here and go back besides that we also have some options on the remote control so we are going to cover that now first of all i would like to mention right over here that this is a setup that supports 8k at 60 hertz dual 8k at 60 hertz but more realistic for our setups 4k at 120 hertz which is awesome for those that want to connect gaming computers ps5 xbox or next generation consoles that can support high refresh rate and high frames per second it also supports 12-bit hdr dolby vision g-sync free sync each HDR 10 plus and a lot more. I will leave some specifications right over here on the screen, but the link will be down below with everything that we can uh, get out of this KVM, which by the way, it has some LEDs that I will show you in just a few moments that looks really nice. Although it has a basic function, which is to have this flexibility in terms of multitasking. Talking about multitasking, the first thing that I would like to mention in terms of accessories before we go to the speed test, I did test out this gamepad it works perfectly like the keyboard and mouse that I've got right over here and in terms of gaming the experience was really awesome the only suggestion that I would made in terms of a setup with dual screens not only for this KVM but for everything that we use for dual screens is that the best experience will come if we use one screen for gaming and the other screen for work or anything that we are browsing I don't know something else but one screen for gaming I did test out with Forza Horizon 5 which is one of my favorite games also tested out with Overwatch 2 the experience was awesome high refresh rate high resolution everything great but for those that are wondering okay I want a dual setup for gaming and I want to use the display for gaming as a single display I would say that it's not the best scenario we've tried this in the past the best scenario is a triple display setup which we will see in a few days but with two displays we will get the um, middle with the bezel so as you imagine is not the best experience so for those that are wondering if you really want a gaming experience with more than one display then a triple display is the minimum that I would suggest nonetheless for those that want to work and play this is perfect now talking about perfect i did test out and we are going to test out right over here in terms of bandwidth of the ethernet connection because at this moment i've got one single cable that connects to the kvm and the kvm will share to computer number two and computer number one now i'm reaching 500 megabits per second which is the maximum of my isp but it is enough to test this out because we know that we have either 100 megabits 1 gigabit, 2.5 gigabit, 5 or 10 and at this moment we can check out that it has 1 gigabit speed reaching out the maximum of my ISP so this is great I just need one cable for my two computers to have full bandwidth I've got also a SSD connected right over here to the KVM and we can do a speed test I can go right over here select target drive and this is the mini 1 TV let's start and we will reach more or less 500 megabytes per second reads and on right so it has USB 3.0 and it's reaching the maximum of 
the 500 megabytes per second, 5 gigabit at this moment writing 433. This will also depend on the SSD that we are using. So these are great speeds and more than acceptable if we want to transfer files from one computer, which is right over here, to the other computer or vice versa without having to disconnect cables and whatnot. Everything will be transferring automatically from one computer to the other. So let's stop the test. And one of the examples that we can do is that if I press this button and I can open here my computer and at this moment I've got two hard drives. One is the internal hard drive and the other one is the SSD. So if I press here, we will transfer both displays to the computer number two and as we can see my ssd was recognized so if i go to my pc on this side i will have the local disk i've got another internal ssd on this computer and then we also have the ssd right over here now in terms of the basic functionality of the kvm it's easy as just pressing this button and passing from one computer to the other one with both screens. So I'm working on this particular computer, which has Windows, but I can be working on the second computer. This one also has Windows, but it can be Linux. Sometimes I'm testing Android machines and I use a KVM on my daily basis. And this is awesome because I don't need to waste any time. But my favorite way to work is not with the KVM, is with the keyboard. But before we go, if you are a bit far from your KVM, which usually I'm not, you can also use the remote control which is included so if I want to change for example to number two I can just press the number two and we will go to computer number two or I can do with computer number one there's also a few more combinations right over here of um, the numbers that we can change one screen or the other but let's do that with the keyboard which I believe that it's a lot friendlier so one of the common situations that I found on my daily basis is that I'm working on two displays but suddenly I need to see something on my computer on this screen and something on my computer number two on this screen so in this particular case I just need to press control control left or right screen sorry and it will change the right screen to my computer now my keyboard and mouse are still locked to computer number one so if i want to use this one i just need to press twice alt and my keyboard and mouse are now released and if you are wondering hey robert that's a lot of keys that's a lot of confusion it's not let me show you something let's press double alt and i'm back on computer number one if i go to my browser here and at this moment I've, I'm on the manual for this KVM which you can have access as well even before purchasing and we will see right over here a lot of combinations and a lot of shortcuts that we can use now the beauty of this is that there are a lot of shortcuts but we can learn them uh, slowly so for example the control key if I press twice and press computer number one it will change both displays to computer number one so it's easy as this if I do exactly the same but with number two it will change to computer number two if I do control control left I will change just the left so if I do it once again let me just go to computer number one let's wait because this one takes uh, always more time oh, I just did change the, the mouse sorry control control left there we go we are back to computer number two so this is the easiest way that i use on a daily basis not only here to show you but on a daily basis because i work with a similar kvm on my main setup and talking about shortcuts there are a few more that i want to share with you which are probably the first time that i'm using and let's go for computer number one so that i can share with you one right over here and it has to do with the LEDs here at the bottom now first of all when I change computers it will change from blue to green so I can always identify visually right over here if I press right now it will go to green and that means computer number two and if I press once again it will go to blue and it will let me know that I'm in computer number two in computer number one sorry so this is a visual way to identify the computer that we are connected but besides that there is a shortcut right over here which I can show you here uh, and it's really really simple I just need to press control control L and then from 0 to 3 now 0 means that the LED at the bottom is completely turned off which is something that we might want if we press number 1 it will give me the LED in 
green or in blue according to the computer that I'm switching to so it's a reinforcement in terms of the LED and then if we press number two we will have the marquee lightning which is also really cool it will change between several lights and then finally there's a static breathing orange light as well which might be a cool which is also a cool light and of course T Smart is all about orange so I do believe that if you have only one choice for one color orange could be the best uh, possible scenario there is one more shortcut be before we go and that has to do with the uh, fan that it's included right over here so this is an active fan uh, device which if you have a lot of stuff going on it will ramp up the fan to keep it cooled down and if it's not like now uh, it is quiet so my AC is louder than the fan this computer is louder than the fan I'm not really sure what you can hear but I will try to change right over here with you so if we take a look at the manual here I just need to press control control f3 and it did give me four beeps and that means that it's on mode 4 the fan operates at high speed I will try to put my microphone here so this is the high speed of the fan which I believe that it's not um, necessary unless you are in a desert with really huge heat. So if I press Control Control F3, it will give me one beep saying that it's in mode one. So the fan is completely disabled. At this moment, I can't hear anything. And honestly, here on my environment with AC on and with the temperature that I have, which is about 23, 24, I could leave it as it is. No fan at all, and I would have a great experience. We can also change to mode number two which is the automatic mode or we can change to the number three which is low speed continuously i know that it's getting refreshed and i will have no issues whatsoever in terms of graphics in terms of the temperature right over here but of course this depends on my environment there are a lot more as you can see but these are the main ones and in terms of LEDs this was the first time that I saw a KVM with LEDs that we could control that is just awesome so once we add this KVM to our setup it will make our life a lot easier so in probably in one day I will save a lot of minutes in one week I will save probably a couple of hours in one month I will save I wouldn't say a week but a lot of hours you get the idea this will make our desk a lot more organized and in terms of multitasking it will be a lot faster now today the example was a dual screen with two computers but there are different setups with one computer two displays one computer three displays three computers and three displays I will leave some links down below so that you can check out some of the T-Smart devices but if you still have any questions any doubts leave a comment down below or even you can contact the T-Smart support email which is down below as well. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. If you still haven't subscribed to the channel please consider doing it so so that you can keep on receiving news and tips such as this one right over here where we did share this setup and some of the potential that we can take out of this KVM. My name is Roberto George and as always, I'll see you on the next one.